It's used to tell what today's date is and other dates too. I'm excited by this discovery. <laughs> Right, so I'm probably gonna have to hack this keypad, right? I wonder what the combination is. I want. Oh god. Why does that sound like it? It sounds like it could be part of a song. Hmm. It's used to tell what to do. Nope. I don't need this. It says, door password, cabbage. It says, door password, cabbage. Is that it? It can't be that simple, right? Come on. Wait. Cabbage. C A B B A. That, that's it. Hmm. That seemed too easy. Maybe there's something more to that code. Yeah, that much is obvious, especially the fact that it has lowercase and uppercase A's. I don't need that. It says door password cabbage. Wait a minute, those are musical notes, aren't th oh, they're musical notes. Okay, hold on. It says door password cabbage. Yep, C A B. Hold on. It's used to tell what to date. I got this, I got this. It says door password cabbage. C A B. Um, and then B minor A G E. Okay. And I've got the little musical thing on my apps. In my apps. Which is even marked. Yes. Okay, so. So wait, then how does this translate though? Do I just play this in front of it and it unlocks or what? Mm hmm. Right, so it'd be. Right, but that doesn't actually do anything. It really doesn't do anything. So what? Yeah, I'm not really sure how to translate this. Just match the sounds. Uh, how in the hell would I do that? I can't play them back to back. It takes like 30 seconds just to switch.
That kind of sounded like sounds like the nine, doesn't it? I, d I don't know. Like I get it. I wish. I get that those are musical notes. I get that I can play them on here. I'm just not sure how to translate them. I mean, I still need to actually enter the numbers. All right, well, let's try this. Let's just assume that this is just, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Right? So, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I don't know, maybe it needs a lot of digits. So that's 10, 11, 12. And then this would be 11. And the A is once again 10. And the G is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the E is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's an awfully long code. Not sure if it can get that long. We're about to find out. Eight and then five? Ah, it can't be that long. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait, it takes eight? It takes eight, but there's only seven notes. It says door password cabbage. It takes eight, but there's only seven notes. What does that mean? I'm so damn close to it. But I'm not sure where to go from here. I don't know. I mean, the only one that's not one of these main keys is just this one. So I could call this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and just ignore the black keys, but then, you know, what number would I put for this? Okay, I'm thinking... Is it... Am I supposed to match the tones? Well, let me just briefly look and see if I am. They need to be recreated using the tones of the keypad. What? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand what... Why? I mean, that's perfectly fine if there's a way to listen to them back to back, but it takes like 30 seconds to switch between the two. What, do you think I have perfect pitch and perfect memory too? Like seriously? I need to go into here. Go. Let's get the first two. 
This is an instrument. I need to match the pitch, even though the actual sound is completely different between the two. This makes a piano sound, the other makes a beepy noise. The pitches are the same, of course, but it's a totally different type of sound. Let's see if I can get the first two. Like what? <laughs> no. I'm just gonna enter the code from the walkthrough because this this is dumb. I get it, but no. In reality, actually solving that puzzle would just mean endless trial and error. Even though I totally get exactly what you're supposed to do, just no. Nope. Those are the two. Mm hmm. I mean, if they made the same noise, the same sort of noise, and you could play them right next to each other, maybe it'd be okay, but no, not like that, for fuck's sakes, come on. Nine, eight, six, three. Okay, wonderful. Hello, my bee, bee cubicled friend. How are you doing? You're not supposed to be in here. Neither are you. What are you smiling about? Yeah, he's not the guy who just shredded my documents. Hi there. Want to grab a coffee? No, I don't want to grab a coffee. Where is the man in the black suit? Gary? His cubicle's just at the end. You sure you don't want coffee? Mm, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Also, that looks like the same cat clock that was in the shop in Jaganistan. Invisible wall. Um, what? Are these stairs? Oh. Wait, what? And this is the only place he could have gone. I should search this cubicle. Hey, this is the same uh, cubicle that you're in when you do the tutorial. This is the tutorial cubicle. Yeah. This is a tool used to present spreadsheets to disaffected workers. This is a photograph of a beach. This is a family photograph. It's a computer monitor. It's used to tell what today's date is and other dates do. I'm bored enough, thank you. I don't need this. Let's leave. I don't need to. Uh, what? What did that do? is that? Cool, there's an ancient Mayan temple underneath this place. Time to go exploring. I guess I'd better see where it goes. Ah. This looks like the same robed people that were talking in the beginning of the game. Apologies for the delay. The Tribute arrived upstairs seeking to have his identity restored. The Tribute found his way here? 
Indeed. I destroyed his application and left him out there. He will likely give up soon. If not, we will call security and have him escorted away. Very good. Brothers and sisters, if nobody has anything to add to the agenda, let us begin. Item 1. The Beast insists that paper recycling collection shall be moved to every other Tuesday and plastic recycling should be collected every other Thursday. Yeah, okay, as enlightening as we this is, I think I'm gonna interrupt commands, you. Excuse me. But the garbage men are bristling at the change. We'll find that. Item one. No, no, no. The beast insists that paper recycling collection shall be moved to every other Tuesday, and plastic recycling should be collected every other Thursday. We have done as the beast commands, but the garbage men are bristling at the change. Okay, is there some sort of a timing thing here? That will be addressed in item 74, redefining the procedures for grievances issued by sanitation workers. Okay, so I need to wait for them to talk till I can move, is that it, I think? Ornate wardrobe. It's a beautiful gold-plated wardrobe with an ornate gold bull's head for a handle. No thanks. I don't think it would fit me very well anyway. Suit. Is that the suit for the douchebag? He switched into his robe. <laughs> Why did it start at 30? Fate of the Adminitar, the right of the Adminitar, and the origin of the Adminitar. Ornate computer. What is that, a gold plated computer? What the hell? It's a gold plated computer, no doubt belonging to the leader of this place. Well, he's gonna wanna get the gold melted when he realizes that the screen is completely obsolete in about four years. computer appears to be password protected. I won't be able to do anything with this. Wow, this library is huge. Some of these books look incredibly fragile, and I don't need to read them all. All right, let's take a look at these Adminitar books. Minotaur dwelled within the labyrinth until the day of its death. In that time, it was known that homely spinsters would occasionally venture deep into the maze in order to lay with the demigod of the Cretan sun. One such woman, Bureaucratea, survived the encounter to produce her own monstrous unnatural offspring. The Oracle Adelphi, outraged that a second abomination was had, ordered Bureaucratea to death. The second beast grew without the hunger and ferocity of a sire, and preferred solitude from which it could write in peace. When Theseus ventured into the labyrinth to slay the Minotaur, he also encountered his offspring. On the walls carved in stone and inked in its own blood, the beast described in explicit detail the requirements for Minoan wagons to arrive on time, festivals to remain on budget, and a hundred other rules that would improve the popularity of the king. When he brought this news back with him, King Minos ordered the second beast known as the Adminitar spared. While the Minotaur was a curse to Minos, the Adminitar offspring became essential to its survival. Okay. But the gift of rulemaking did not come without a price. Every harvest season, 
one citizen of Minos would be sacrificed to the Admenitar in tribute. Never killed, the citizen would be stripped of rights and property and sentenced to exile. As the Admenitar brought functional civil society to the people, so too did it take those rights away from those offered as tributes. A tribute would not be permitted to vote, hold coin, own land, or be acknowledged by his kin. Likewise, a tribute may not be taxed, nor be forced into service. Nowhere has the essence of the myth of the Admenitar been expressed more succinctly than in the Petrogades attributed to Sophocles. Monstrous in form and voice, the beast had a transcendent mind and a stone heart. From its hands wove eloquent policies and regulations, not because it had any understanding of the world above, but because it had a savant-like understanding of how it should function, how it must function, for mankind to maintain dominion over it. It wrote laws the way composers write music, not because it should, but because it does not know how to stop. Right, so am I a tribute to the Admonitor? I should explore some more... Have I not explored everything else first? Seriously, what have I not explored? There's the suit I can't take, there's the safe I don't know the password to, and then there's the computer I don't know the password to. Or can I, like, go to a different part of the room? I'm trying to see if there's like a one pixel big level transition. It's a gold. The computer, I won't be able to. There's a building. It says Polonius Vendelroy. Oh. And he works for the Department of Social Security and Citizenship. I guess he's the guy in the red cloak? I don't think I'm going to learn much more in this room. And that's my cue to leave. Wait, I don't even have it with me? The note? Or do I? No thanks. I... No thanks. I guess I can never look at what that said again. Okay. Bye. Okay, let's take a look out there and see what's going on. They're on a coffee break. I should be able to sneak across that podium now. Be very careful. Oh, hold on. Um... You know, I forgot to tweet. Uh, that's the same tweet I made like five million years ago. Anyway. Oh dear god. This is going to be fun. What is that? Looks like a hole in a body. Oh, that's exactly what it is. Poor guy looks like he's been there a very long time. His last words. His last... Let's take a look. My friends, it appears I got myself a bit lost on the way to the pedestal. Following procedure 6A of a manual, I am staying put and waiting for somebody to find me. After three days without so much as a drop of water, I just realized that it's a long weekend. Strongly suggest we revise our procedures. Jeez, that's rough. 
Ah, bureaucracy. Those robes look pretty decayed. I should be able to rip myself a patch without too much trouble. Sorry, buddy. And why would I want a patch of his robe? Okay. Yeah, when you die on your way to the podium, you might want to revisit the safety of your workplace. Wait a minute, can I not save the game? I just realized there's no menu. Huh. Okay, what is this thing? It's like a thing coming out of the wall, but I can't touch it. goes to this, but it looks like there's a chasm. Let's try it anyway. And how am I supposed to get there? That bottomless pit is kind of an obstacle. Oh, you can jump that. Come on, you're a teacher. You have training. Or wait, did they stop training teachers and jumping over great gaping chasms? Hit it with a shuffle. I, I can't dig it. Yeah, I think I need a board or something. That looks like a trap. Let's see if that's a trap. Hmm. Maybe not. It's an ornate pedestal. Maybe it has something to do with what is on that wall. Seems like it. What am I supposed to do with it? Looks like it wants, like, an offering. Or something. Robe? No. Colonels? From Chikenistan? They've come a long way. I'm not going to throw corn. Okay, then. Nothing happened. It may have something to do with those blocks behind me. So, two different areas I need to do something in. I've got a chasm and I've got a pedestal that needs something in it. Why does it look like a skeleton? What the hell is that? Hm. Can't get to it. I wish I moved about 10 times faster. No, can 
do anything with his body. Right, so this is going nowhere. Obviously, I need to open this. As you can see, it's a little bit displaced from the wall. Right, so what have I not done? Did I try to pull this lever? Was that the one that had the thing on things on the wall, or was that somewhere else? We're about to find out. No, that's the thing with the thing on the wall. So, yeah, I can press this. Okay, what do you do? Okay, what the hell did that do? Better be over here, or I'm gonna have to go all the way back around. I really wish I could just drag this map around, drag the view around. Okay, this was this open before? Yeah, it must it must have been right. Nothing opened up over here, did it? God, wh what opened? Or closed? Or moved? This is unbearably tedious. I'm just gonna look at the walkthrough while I'm walking over here to see if there's something I'm missing. Oh, yeah, I'm missing something. What? Um, I, apparently I need to leave the maze and soak the rags in water or something. My eyes twitching right now. I wish you could see it. I feel like this game is trying to... What the hell is that weird expression that's always sounded weird to me? having cake and eating it too or something. I've never understood that expression really because I don't know why you wouldn't want to eat cake if you have it. But I'm pretty sure it's meant to be applied here. In the sense that it almost seems like the gameplay is in many ways supposed to be bureaucratic and absurd. And that's kind of the point of it. The problem is it's not actually interesting to play. It's, it's a subterranean river. There. Let me just make sure I'm not missing something else. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, apparently I'm not. Should be good to go. Now we gotta go all the way back to the pedestal. I really don't get the next part of the walkthrough. It says, put it in the pedestal. Or, wait a minute. Oh no, I slightly misread that. Actually, I don't actually need the piece of cloth for this right now. I'm going to need it for something. But for now, apparently I can light the parchment on fire. Although I don't know what, with what. I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any source of flame. Okay, that's going to prove to be a problem, apparently. Oh, there's a torch. It appears to be... I'd better do something. this no no fuck you no uh-uh mm -mm. I don't know what that is but fuck that nope it's an ornate nothing it may have something <laughs> no Here's that one block got stuck. And appears and So I can turn it to whatever I want, huh? And what happens if it's the wrong one? Nothing. It may have some. Right, so I need to find a pattern or something. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, four, five, six. I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, three, four, five, five. I... The most important question here might be do I care? Do I have something that could help me with this? Do I care? I don't really care. Google, to the rescue. Um, ancient Mayan block puzzles. Nope. Um, what about squiggly lines? A history. Scuggly lines. I'll, f I'll settle for scuggly lines. Hmm. I don't really care. I, I really don't care. Uh, move it so it's stuck to the P-shape. Pull the lever. Okay, thank you, walkthrough. You're very helpful. I'm sorry, but if you haven't noticed, I've really lost interest in engaging with these puzzles because it feels like they're just trying to waste my time. I don't really care anymore. I don't like mazes. I really don't like mazes either. 
Yeah. It's full of lava. Not sure how that's going to help me get over it. Um... I have the wet rag. And, you know, if the lava solidified, I could obviously walk on it, but I don't think a couple drops of water is going to solidify lava. So I don't think that's going to work. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm just going to use a walkthrough to get me out of here. I don't want to be in here anymore. Okay, so that's like a pouring lava shape, I guess. And then it says the next step is to put the... the wet rag in here. Another set of symbols. <laughs> so I needed to pour water and solidify it, I guess? Let's see if I can figure this one out on my own. Let's just look at the symbols. Nah. 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 Could be that one. Pouring kind of symbol. Ooh, that looks like a pathway. Let's try that one. Well, that did something somewhere. Success! See, I solved a tiny part of the puzzle on my own. Yay! So let me guess, I poured water on it and it's now solidified. Now I can walk on it and press the stupid lever. I have no idea what that did. Okay, walk through. Move the suck block to the downward facing wand shape. So that would be that one. Well, that didn't. So even if it says it does something somewhere, it doesn't necessarily actually work, I guess. Okay. called the magma into igneous rock. It's an ornate gold plate. That's interesting. The lever completely disappeared when I pulled it. Can I leave, please? There we go. Gotta find the one pixel hotspot. Okay, so what did that do? I think I can just go in now. Just very, very tediously go in. I never want to come back to this place so bad. I just want out. This is what I have nightmares about. Like, normal people have nightmares about crazy monsters or, like, getting murdered or something. I have nightmares 
about being stuck in mazes with horrible adventure game puzzles. That's what makes me toss and turn at night. Hi. Okay, good talk. Oh, I guess I have to talk to him. There's nothing else I can do. I... Local residents must not release more than 10 helium balloons within 24 hours. <laughs> or is it 10 or more helium balloons? Holy heck, you must be the Admitator. Neither God nor man. I am the original pedant from whose hands flow all bureaucracy. And you are in the center of your particular puzzle. My mind is foggy. My ritual is not fulfilled. What can you tell me about the cult guarding the labyrinth? They read my whispers of thought and govern your world. Okay, cool. What is this labyrinth? Who built this place? These walls bear markings mapped with the scars of my whole life. This was my father's home. Adminatar Senior? Tell me about the ritual. Parchment names who must be cast out. Without the ritual, I can only see so far. But the ritual was fulfilled, was it not? That's why the government has lost all record of my identity. I'm the tribute! The Celestial Order calls for the one to be cast out. I am only the speaker. There are no substitutions. There are no refunds. Your mileage must not vary. You are not my tribute, David. This ritual has cheated us both. Wait, what? Three numbers repeat. Over and over. 34, 21, 6. The Celestial Order calls to us both, David. My ritual must be fulfilled if I am to write policy with a clear mind. Okay, well he just gave me the combination to the safe. Local residents must or is it Holy neither and you my mom <laughs> I can beg him. Uh unknown chance of success. Unknown chance of success at what? But the ritual was for that. The there are, there are, you are. Wait, what? Third, my, hold on, hold, hold on. What does this do? What? They, I, I didn't mean to press that. Here. I beg of you, please restore my identity and let me go back to my normal life. Your identity is not mine to restore. Okay, wonderful. I am curious what would happen if I threatened him. Oh, thank God, you took me back here automatically. Thank you, thank you. I thought I was going to have to leave this place manually. Oh, hold on, i got to tweet this out again. Hm. I think maybe the, the developers might have forgotten about the tweet thing, because I don't think that's updated since the first, like, hour of the game. The numbers are beating over and over again. 34, 21, 6. Oh, wait. Oops. Sweet. There is a parchment in this safe. It must be to sacrifice the Adminitar intended.
It says... Polonius Vindelroy. So why did the government delete all of my records? Okay, if you would all kindly return to your seats. We're ready to reconvene and discuss the remaining agenda items. I should confront those cultists with this. Alright, so it looks like whatever that guy's name was, was going to be the sacrifice he didn't want to be, so he forged everything to make it look like uh, I was supposed to be the sacrifice so that he wouldn't be sacrificed. In other words, he's a douchebag. Okay, let's take a look out there and see. Give me my damned identity back! What is the meaning of this? I woke up this morning with an eviction notice on account of the fact that you bastards robbed me of my bank records. And now, now, I find out the whole time it should have been this clown? What is he talking about? Who is that guy? See for yourself. Here is the name demanded by the so-called Adminitar. Where did you get that? Give that to me. It says Polonius Vindelroy. No. It can't be. I don't believe it. He speaks the truth. I too am guilty of this conspiracy. What are you doing? I'm sorry, Polonius. When the beast demanded Polonius as tribute, we decided that our family needed his leadership to endure. So, we searched for an outsider instead. Someone that nobody would miss. Someone that nobody would help. We selected this outsider, and we performed the ritual on him. And we hoped that this would be just as good. But it hasn't been working, has it? The bureaucracy is falling apart. I mean, how long are the doctor's office wait times? Days? Postal workers keep going on strike again and again. Public buses are perpetually breaking down. This is our fault. I don't believe this. Step aside, Polonius. I will restore that man's identity now. I just realized that's a massive monitor up there. Really done. It seems, David, that you have learned the darkest secret of the civil service. No man or machine could ever make sense out of the collective red tape that has accumulated over the course of this country's history. To find order in the bureaucratic chaos that is Canada, we have needed divine intervention. And until now, this has been fueled by otherwise innocent stooges. The question is, what will you do with this knowledge? <laughs> you have a socialist ending and a libertarian ending. Um, let's restore all lost identities. That seems like fun, yeah! How many innocent people have been forced out of their homes so you weirdos can listen to a talking cow tell you how many squirrels are allowed in a public park? Being a bureaucrat doesn't give you the license to rob Canadians of their livelihoods. What is wrong with you people? As painful as it is to imagine, what if the outsider is correct? To hell with you all! I'll restore their identities myself. <laughs> See, Biscuit. Do you know what you've done? You've defiled the ritual! We'll lose the foresight of the Adminitar. That's the point. Anyone who sacrifices a life for a thousand mindless rules is not fit to govern. This cult is finished. I'm going home.
The more corrupt the state, the more numerous the laws. <sighs> and there we go. <laughs> There's the Adminitar being arrested. Civil servant cult uncovered. Ancient god found in maze. <laughs> Ancient god found in maze. That's not something you normally see in the headlines, huh? Polar bear slaughterhouse. <laughs> and it's dumping like toxic sludge into the rivers or whatever. Nice. Fighting the establishment. That's a very appropriate thing to teach after what he's been through. Let's see what else pops up. Guns, burgers, and daycare. America, yeah, except this doesn't even take place in America, but still, America, yeah. Guns, and burgers, and daycare. Two of those things sound pretty American. Not quite sure what's going on in that image. There's paramedics outside. And that's the restaurant. Is that someone who threw up because the food was horribly poisonous? I don't know. Anyway, I restored my identity. Okay, now to give a brief... Well, I don't know if it'll be brief, but now to give a wrap-up on the game. A special thank you from both Little Red Dog Games and the Foundation Fighting Blindness to our generous donors. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's dig into the game and examine it a bit. Going back to the menu. Think so. Think it's going to the. Me yeah, here we go. Okay. Actually, let's look at the achievements. Hole in one made the golf shot on your first attempt. Birdman. Honked, clucked, and tweeted. You're, you're a wizard, Neo. You swallowed a housefly. Excellent. Two more achievements that I don't even care about. I swear, you could, like, sample all of these sounds and make a song out of it. Tricky to time it right, just doing it with your mouse, though. But anyway, yeah. So let's talk about the game. Wish there was some background music. Let's make it so. There we go. Background music. This game is... Eh, I mean, eh. It's alright, yeah. Pretty much sums up my opinion of it. No, um... I don't know. I mean, there's no denying it was really frustrating and obnoxious in so many ways. I can't say it was good. Uh, I can't say it was bad either. I don't know. It's just, it's okay. I didn't have a huge amount of expectations going into it. So I can't say I'm super disappointed. But... I don't know. I just expected to enjoy myself more. Like, I mean, this game is about... Uh, it's a parody of bureaucracy. And yet, actually playing the game felt like I was going through horrible bureaucracy, not in a funny, 
detached way, making fun of it, but making it fun to actually do, but in, like, genuinely not fun, or interesting, or engaging. Again, the having your cake and eating it too kind of thing. Like, I get that it's making a parody of bureaucracy, so it makes sense that you do bureaucratic things. You know, you do things that take a lot of steps. To a humorous degree. But it doesn't work, at least not the way it's been done here. It's just... Ugh. So many of the puzzles were just mind-numbing. Just mind-numbing. I just completely lost interest in doing the puzzles to the point where I pretty much just used the walkthrough for nearly everything towards the end. You know, I kept getting to cases where... Uh, to where I could have tried more stuff. Of course, but I didn't want to. Because at that point, I would just be trying... You know, I'd be regressing to the point where you're trying everything on everything. And frankly, when you get to that point, it's not interesting. When you're doing the hunt... Where you're trying to hunt for the hotspot that you missed. Or the item interaction that you missed. And you're literally using everything on everything, and you're not actually thinking... You know, you're not using intelligence anymore, you're just using brute force. That's not fun, it's not engaging, it's not interesting, it's just a waste of time. That's all it is. When you get to that point, you might as well just use a walkthrough. Because at that point, your time's just being wasted. No one benefits from that. At all. It's not satisfying to do. It's not interesting. It's just... It's a waste of your time. Which is why I kept using the walkthrough. It's like, I don't care to figure this out, because... Yeah. I would just end up having to do everything. Just, I mean, don't get me wrong, the game, it's okay. Like, it's not bad. It's got some elements that are good and some that are bad. The worst being definitely the puzzles. But just to mention some good things so this doesn't sound all negative, I think the pixel art, the, uh, the art of it is actually pretty damn good. It's got a nice, clean look to it. I like it. I like how it looks. The voice acting is... Um... Uh, I'd say overall it was pretty good. The main character is very good. Some of the other characters are quite good. Some of them were iffy. But overall, you know, the voice acting is pretty good. Uh, I think the music is actually really good. Nice and groovy. Just always there in the background, kind of... Serving to take down the stress one notch. Not literally, because it seems like nothing in the freaking, almost nothing in the world will actually reduce the stress bar, but... But you know, the player's stress, it's nice. Having that groovy music in the background. Almost felt like everything was alright. Until you get into the maze, and then you realize, oh, actually it's not alright, it's actually freaking horrible, please get me out of here. So except for those cases, it was nice. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I mean, it's okay. I really don't like the way the puzzles were designed in general, though. I mean, so many cases of just going back and forth, like the the maze. Just, the maze. You think, oh, did I forget something back there? And then you realize you have to walk like a full minute to get back to even check. That, uh, That's not fun. That's not interesting. The mom the, you know, the moment when I realized I was missing the maple syrup to put my image on that security badge. Why did I miss the maple syrup? Oh, that's right, because it's a very small item. And there's no hotspot indicator. Like, why is there no hotspot indicator? I've said this before, having small items, like, okay, one problem, a big problem that pixel art adventure games have is that you ha you're having to represent a lot of things with very few pixels. So when you have small objects, like, I don't know, watches or bottles and whatnot, you don't have a lot of information with which to represent it. So it can be tough to make things stand out when you have so few pixels to do it. It's a problem. You can't really get around it. When you have pixel art games, it's going to be hard to do that. However, the solution is pretty damn easy, or at least one solution. A hotspot indicator. It's that simple. You can have the tiniest items. You can have items that are one pixel big. If you have a hotspot indicator, it's no big deal. 
No big deal. Like, I mean, I don't... I don't understand why it doesn't have one. I really don't. It's not like it really takes away anything from the puzzle solving. I mean, in the real world, you know what you can interact with. But you have to realize that in games, that's not true. You know, most of what you see in the world, you can't interact with. Right next to the maple syrup bottle, there was, I think, a, what, a ketchup and, like, a mustard bottle? You couldn't touch those. So you have something that can be interacted with, next to a bunch of other extremely similar things that you can't. It only makes sense when you have those situations where you can't be expected to know what you can and can't interact with, and it's easy to overlook stuff. It just makes sense to have a hotspot indicator. It just makes sense. And remember the time when I didn't see the uh, toy... the toy badge thing in the toy store? I counted the pixels. What was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? Wasn't it literally 10 pixels big? Yeah, I'm pretty sure the badge was 10 pixels big. I mean, really? 10 pixels. Let me just emphasize how big 10 pixels is. That is... Uh, look at this 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This 5 is made up of 11 pixels. That's how small 10 pixels are, even at this size. And the badge was made up of 10 pixels. Less pixels than this 5. I mean, <laughs> come on. Really. Just, ugh. Why do that? Why? Like, I mean, it was just a string after string of... mind-numbingly tedious puzzles. Some were okay, but most of them just ranged from either just... not very interesting to just downright smash my face into my desk, I can't... Like, I just feel like I'm wasting my time. I, they really drove me up the wall. Unfortunately. You know, and to a certain degree, driving you up the wall with the puzzles in a game that's supposed to be mocking bureaucracy could work. To some degree. It makes sense. But not like this. Not when you're driven up the wall because it takes a minute to walk out of a, a stupid maze. Not when you miss a 10 pixel sized plastic toy badge. Not when you miss the maple syrup next to a bottle of ketchup and mustard and whatnot that you can't pick up. And, like, the stress mechanic. I talked about it a bit before, but I don't like it at all. It's just, it's utterly pointless. Well, I shouldn't say utterly pointless. It, it does serve a point in the sense that it's supposed to model your character's stress. You're getting stressed out because all of these horrible things are happening to you, right? That makes sense. You would be stressed. However, this isn't, this is by no means the only way to indicate that. You could simply indicate it through dialogue and stuff like that. His increasing frustration. Just... The way the stress meter was implemented is not interesting or good or conducive to any sort of anything good. <laughs> it's not conducive to anything positive in the game. It's really not. The only thing it does is it just annoys you when you end up going over the stress meter and you just instantly die and have to redo stuff you already did. That's all it does. It just wastes your time. It's a thing that you ignore until you can't ignore it anymore. And then once you can't ignore it, you've now just had your time wasted. As in the case where I didn't know how to play the minigame, the golf minigame at the doctor's office because I hadn't played it before and my stress was already extremely high. So I missed two balls and then died and promptly had to redo the entire conversation with the metabot and all that. Like, that's just ridiculous. And it doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even make any sense, because it's... If this is supposed to be modeling the character's stress, then surely it makes sense for the stress meter to go down when good things happen, right? 
bad things happen, like you talk to your ex-wife and your stress goes up. You almost get hit by a car and your stress goes up. You, I, even a minor annoyance makes your stress go, go up sometimes. And yet, for some reason, m your stress doesn't go down when you obtain your certificate of life. And your stress doesn't seem to go down when you obtain your birth certificate. Like, you make progress in all of these solid, very important ways. Like, yeah, I mean, obtaining your certificate of life is like one of the... One of the very few major things you need to do, and that doesn't even reduce your stress. But your stress can be raised by calling your ex-wife or something like that. It doesn't even make any sense. You know, even if it could be reduced by things like making progress, it still wouldn't be good. It would just, it would be better. But the problem is, is managing your stress is not something you can really do in any effective way. It isn't really something to manage. It's something to be ignored until you can't. I mean, how can you reduce your stress? I think I was able to reduce my stress a little bit by being around the park, because it was pretty, I guess. I'm assuming you can reduce your stress by playing this game and actually being successful at it. Of course, if you mess it up, it makes your stress goes up, go up every time. As I just did. And you can reduce your stress by taking a very nice bus. The problem is, those aren't interesting things to do. They're just, like, grindy things. I mean, if you get to a point where you need to do that, you're put in the mindset of, oh, I better grind out a nice bus to drive through so I can reduce my stress. That's not interesting. It's, <laughs> that's not good. I actually contemplated playing this game or taking a bunch of buses just to reduce my stress, but I realized that's just grinding. It's pointless. It's a waste of my time, so I didn't do it. And I just hoped my stress wouldn't go up anymore and kill me. Thankfully, it didn't. So the point is, the way the stress meter is implemented is not at all interesting or good, I think. In its current implementation, and even if... And it's not even internally consistent with when you get stress and when you reduce stress. It's just bizarre. And then the, the thirst and hunger meter is introduced when you're in the desert, which is just loathsome. It's like an even worse version of the stress meter. Again, if it gets too high, you just gotta go back and do the same thing you already did before. Distract him again, eat the popcorn again, drink another soda again. Thankfully, I only had to do that once. Because I was really fast, but... Ugh. Yeah, I gotta be honest, it has a lot of problems, and I didn't exactly love it. It's, I, I, I do have to admit, though, it's got kind of a charming world. Kind of. That's the weird part about it. Sometimes it's funny. Because, I mean, it's making fun of bureaucracy, right? That's a pretty... It's a pretty common thing to make fun of, and I think pretty much everybody finds it funny. Because it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? Endless paperwork. I mean, who hasn't encountered that in some way? Filling out forms. Filling out more forms. Oh, look, more forms. Yay. Six to eight weeks. Wonderful. You know, everybody's had to deal with it at some point, probably. And to do it in such a kind of ridiculous, exaggerated way is just... You know, there's so much potential there for humor and fun. I only think it's partially successful at actually getting at the humor, though. I don't know, sometimes it just felt too... obvious. Like, at some points it just felt like it was almost saying, this is, you know, this is bureaucracy, this is ridiculous, and it's just like pointing 20 fingers at it with glowing neon signs around them. Like, it's just too on the nose really often, but other times it was, gen you know, genuinely funny. I've I've laughed out loud multiple times throughout the game because something is just really funny. So it kind of alternates between some things were just like, ugh, kind of groan-worthy and other things that are, yeah, that's good. I think the highlight of the game for me was 
<laughs> strange as it is, probably the encounter with the scorpion. Yeah, actually, no, it was definitely that. The encounter with the scorpion in the desert was, I think, the best part of the game to me. That was just really funny. Yeah, it was a ridiculous boss fight with a tiny scorpion, and first I tried to classify it. And then I tried to educate it. And then I squished it, because, you know, it's a scorpion. So, yeah. This game is... Eh, it's okay. I think the puzzles were in general pretty horrible. But the art's pretty damn good, the music's good, the voice acting's pretty good, and it has some genuinely really funny moments. So it's kind of like a roller coaster ride of gigantic hills, you know, going way up and then going way down, and then up and then down, and then up and then down, and yeah. I guess that about covers it. I can't think of anything else to say. Oh yeah, I guess... God, I feel like I'm being too negative though, but I guess... <laughs> one other thing to mention is that the menu system is pretty ridiculous. Let's call my ex-wife, it'll probably up my stress. Hello? Hi, Madeline. Is this a good time? I could use your help. Oh, I'm sorry, David, but, but it sure was nice hearing from you again. We should do lunch sometime. Bring your checkbook. <laughs> See? <laughs> and that just upped my stress in the red. Wonderful. Okay, so the menu system is... It's really strange, to be honest. It sits in the strange position of being very well polished, but incredibly non-functional. There's no denying, it It looks good. You know, it looks good. You open up your phone and it looks like a phone. And they've integrated it really well with looking like a real world item, you know? Like you're opening up your tablet and it's like you're tapping on stuff on your tablet, you know? All except for this menu, which is just a, you know, a normal game menu. So it's well polished, it looks good, but again, the problem is it's not functional. It's, I mean, the stuff you need to do in the game is separated throughout three different menus. That's completely absurd. You have this phone up here taking up some screen real estate that you almost never use. You almost never use this, and yet it's always there. And then if you want to use your, you know, if you want to use your items, you have to... You have to click on this and wait, like, two seconds for this stuff to pop up. You can't, uh, you can't just use the scroll wheel to like cycle through items. You, that would be really nice. Just, you know, instead of having to wade through menus, just use your scroll wheel to cycle through items. Really simple, but you can't do that. So if you want to use something on the environment, you have to open up your tablet, wait a couple seconds, then you have to click on something, then you have to press return. Like it's so many clicks and it's so cumbersome just to use one item. It's ridiculous. And then if you want to look at your objectives, you have to go to your tablet, then you have to go to apps, then you have to go to this thing, then you can finally see it. And if you want to back out, you have to go return, and yeah. Just... It's just really... Just obnoxious to navigate. It's pretty. There's no denying it's pretty. It looks good, but it's very non-functional. I would have totally loved, I would have totally preferred sacrificing the sort of real-world integration of the menu into a tablet system for simply having a well-functioning menu. Because, I mean, look, I like style. I think I like style more than some people. Right, sort of style over substance sort of thing. Obviously, substance is more important than style. But I think I might have more appreciation for style than maybe most people. I can appreciate a pretty game, even if it's really vapid. So that's why I'm saying. This stuff looks cool. Okay, it looks cool. But when it comes to menus, functionality needs to be first. Functionality always needs to be first. 
Prettiness can come later. It needs to be functional. That's the point of a menu. To present you with options to do stuff. And unfortunately, this one doesn't work too well. Yeah, I mean, even if you even if you want to deselect an item, you have to actually click deselect. I mean, what is that? Why can't I just right click? You you can't even right click to deselect an item. You have to click on a deselect button. It's absurd. And now I have this item stuck on my cursor. Weird. Anyway, okay. So, yeah, I think that pretty much ends my thoughts. Again, it's okay. Got some things that I think are pretty bad and some things that I think are that I think are actually pretty good. It was definitely up and down. So, I hope you enjoyed watching me play through Conspirocracy despite all of the trials and tribulations, the frustrations and annoyances. And Thank you for watching.